then I find need to alter what we do or how I do it and what I ask my boys to do when we don't have the football. Because at the moment, I think much as they're a threat, as we've seen, they were a threat tonight, numerous occasions. Much as they're a threat, I think teams are going to enjoy going to play them. Speaking as a layman. Yes. Right? You hesitated to, to, to pass comment on Bielsa because you haven't coached over a period of time yes. and it, I, I know the position you're in you always feel a little uneasy about that because others are paid good money to do what he currently is mm -hmm. and you feel you're in a fairly invidious position if you criticize and I know you don't like to negatively you're always looking for constructive thought if you can yes I respect that and I understand it right I get I get all that Leeds United could play like this for me every week in the championship Mm -hmm. and beat 9 out of 10 teams. Yes, They'll agreed. come unstuck. Agreed. Once every three agreed. months. You cannot play with that naivety at this level and not expect a calamitous outcome across, as you, Scott, say, the piece. Mm. They are conceding too many goals. Yes, they are. They, would, for me right now, are the one that will get into trouble because that... I mean, it bought a Matt, I tell you why I think Matt it Critchley wants. said at half time. It borders on stupidity, Andy. Some, yeah, it, uh, well, you guys haven't won a home game. You go there and you sit and you wait and you 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 dig out a chance and and, and you, but he's, he doesn't. This is what I'm saying, Th Richard. He might be in this league thinking, Do you know what? I'm just going to send that team out to do exactly what I want, and whatever the result is, that's it. That might be his mind. I don't know. It wouldn't be mine, and it wouldn't be most people I know in the games. Wouldn't be their mindset. Because there's more to it than just being adventurous when you get the ball. So, and I say that, I love watching Leeds play when they have the ball. But every time they lose it, you think they're going to concede a chance. Not a goal, a chance. That's what I said to you at the beginning, right at the beginning we did the teams. I said, they'll probably go at it, Leeds, and they'll say, right, we might have to, we might have to allow a chance to Rashford or Martial or, you know, um, Fernandez, and, and we might have to allow them chances. That's the way they go about it, but we'll take our luck that they're not going to score. Problem is, when you do that, <laughs> when you come against a team whose finishing is very good, you're going to pay. Four against Liverpool, six here tonight. Their defence is porous. Not their defence, their team. Because I'm not going to blame their just their back four and the goalkeeper here. Yeah. Their team is porous. Well, you made the point early. Look how, look how they abandoned ah, Look at the gaps here. Look at the hole there, right at the beginning. I know, Calvin Phillips, I said at half time, he's not at his best 45. The, the skipper got taken off. So that shows you something must have been wrong. Scott McTominay couldn't have had a better start to a football match in his life. But they contribute. One minute, 29 seconds. And the one player that's the most influential player they've got Bruno Fernandes gets the whole part, whole football pitch to walk into. There, not good tracking from Click. Scott McTonney runs in behind him. It's easy. Too easy. This is what I'm saying. Too easy. You shouldn't be conceding like that. Places, people going into the wrong areas. And I, I sometimes wonder, he has players playing in all different positions at times that as well. Look, we, look Ayling's well, a right back, time, he's a centre back. Like watching a schoolboy team. Like, yeah, when they don't have the ball, it can be, I mean, they can look as if they're all over the place at times, I agree with you. But that's the way they play, because when they lose it, the players are allowed to go and express themselves and run everywhere. When they lose it, like here, mm -hmm. so many players have gone forward now, they've hardly anyone. This is where Calvin Phillips gets a bit unlucky because he actually tracks Fernandez for this one, but then loses him. But then goes to the ball and lost lost him, and that's it. So then, and then this was a piece of resistance for him. He's got. I said to you, man for man, the else will know whose fault that goal was. I know whose fault it was. He does. It's the skipper's. That's why he didn't come out. The didn't skipper he? never came out second half. I don't know if we could read anything into that. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. You know, they got to do that. You're going to see a game that's got tons of chances every time you watch Leeds, both for and against. Now, if the coach is happy to go about that, then yes, they're not going to finish higher than 10th in the league. That's the best for me. Then they could get into trouble, but I just think they've got too many goals in them to really get into trouble. That's my theory anyway. Can I take you all the way back? To who? A generation or two. Okay. The great Don Reavy yes. had a Leeds team that oh, was yeah. as good as any yeah, 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 yeah. of its generation yes. and stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. They scored goals. They were By the way, just let me check. You don't, you're not happy here, are you? This is a dive. 
No, I, th I think it's a penalty. This is a dive. He goes down and then storms. Yeah, he, he goes down easy, but it's a penalty. No, it's not. It is for me. It's the 32nd penalty United have had. Look at that. I mean, it's pathetic. Referee. 32nd penalty United have had since the start mm. of last season. Too many. That's a lot. Daniel James is more of a friend than that. He does this every week, him and Yeah, Fernandez. but I just think he puts look, his leg look, across he, him. No, he puts, he, he yeah, initiates the contact, he if, puts his leg into it, he If you stick your leg across over. a player, he's going to no, go down. it's a dive. Anyway. It's a penalty. Don Reedy. Yeah. That team could defend. Yes, I know it could. I know it could. But I played against wonderfully them. wonderfully I played against them. There's some unbelievable players, Bremner Giles. This is just naivety. And, you see, Norman Hunter, God rest the soul, and Jack Charlton, watching this, would be thinking, Sorry? They don't do it, Richard. But this is what I'm saying. You have to understand that if you're a Leeds player or a Leeds fan, this is how you're asked to play. I think that's unsustainable. Well, let's wait and see. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a fascinating question. You think it's unsustainable? I don't know. What I do know is the physical demands he puts on his players might catch up with him come February. Look, I get it. I get it. They're seven points clear. And Burnley have two games in hand. So there's seven points clear at the moment of the relegation zone. Yes, they are very much in the mix. I still think they've got too many goals in them. You see, I think they're in they're it. They're not out of it. I think they're in it. You said yesterday not. No, I don't I mean, we've are. seen some good teams go down with some good players in there. Yeah, we have. In those but teams. I don't expect them to go down. I just don't. That's, that's what I'm saying. I don't expect them to go, go, get involved. I expect them to move up the table as the year turns. That's what I expect. But well, whether, it happens, so whether it happens, I don't know of United coming into this period. We'll know if we're in the title race when we get through the new year. Right now... They're in it. They're in it. They're very much in it. So, the Daniel James pen. Modern game. It, it is yes, a modern is. game, but that's not a pen. Look, he's... Oh, that's, that's a pathetic. penalty. It's a penalty. No. <laughs> yes, it is. No. And they've had too many of those. They get too many of those. They've had 32. There's too much of that in their team. They've had 32 in a Far season and a half. Far too much of it. Rashford does it. Fernandez does it too often. I, I just don't, I don't like it. Don't like it. Start a campaign. I just have. Oh, good lad. <laughs> here is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Sure, he might be hearing from the authorities, I would speculate. Shocking referee. Yeah. Well, I thought it was as well. I, I think he's it. got a right to say that. Of course he I've has. always argued that I think yeah. managers should be able to speak as they feel, <laughs> within reason, but we yeah. want to hear what they well, genuinely listen, think. But he I said think, I was a shocking he, referee, and that's hardly a, you know, hammering the guy non-stop. He's just said it was a shocking decision. He might get a call. He might? Yeah. yeah. Nah, but he's that. right. It was a shocking I thought it was a strange decision. question, Richard. Did you enjoy that? 6-2. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been 10. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? He loved it, yeah. He said a lot of criticism, some, some warranted, some not. Um, interesting to hear about his team. I always find it, because we've all said it's a strange season, mm. and we said at the beginning, 13 games ago, that um, teams will be in different areas of their fitness because we don't know how they've come through the pandemic, we don't know what the fitness has been like when they've entered the season. And it was interesting to hear him say there that he felt that now, 13 games in... They were arriving at their peak in fitness-wise. Um, and I think that's a really interesting one because Leeds have obviously been there from day one, the way they've gone about it. Um, it's whether they can sustain it. But it's interesting to say it's taken them 13 games. He feels they're at peak fitness now. So if we, if we take that as red, then watch them. They should continue to improve. Did you ever suffer one like that as a player? What? A hiding like that, 6-2, six, 6-5-6. Six, six. Um, do you know what? I might have done, but because it was such a hiding, I probably have erased it from my memory bank. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. 6-2, something like that. It's a big one, isn't it? No, I mean, I know Everton won the league. We lost 4-1 at home. We taught them yeah. opening day. Yeah. Um, and I remember that, but I don't think six. No. I was about to say... I've won a few six. How does it feel? You can't answer the question. Patrick Bamford can. <laughs> it's a tough one to take, to be honest. I think that... Not the fact that we deserved anything from it, but I think because it's such a big game and obviously it means a lot to the fans and the club. First time back in the Premier League in a while to play against Man United and then to show up like that. I think that um, we probably let everyone down. Um, I think that it could have it could have been a different scoreline. So it probably it could have been six six maybe. It could have also been ten two. So. Um, it's one of them where it was a, a frantic game. We didn't put our chances away. I missed two good chances at the start of the game and um, they were clinical. And, you know, the players that they've got, like Rashford, Martial, them types of players, Bruno Fernandes, you, you can't afford to give them half a yard and uh, we gave them much more than that at times. 
I mean, it, you won't need reminding, but it was obviously it was the worst possible start as well. Is that part of the manner which Leeds play? You know, as much as you get all the positives with the attacking and you bring goals galore, that sometimes you do leave yourself susceptible. Um, the idea behind it isn't that we're susceptible no, at the that. back, but um, sometimes it, it can look that way. I think that especially in the top league, like the Premier League, I think that you do get if there is that gap and that space to, to expose then they, the other teams find it I think that maybe we got with no disrespect to the championship we got away with it a little bit at times last year um, it's something that we need to tighten up on but as you said our, our style and play is, is aggressive attacking and pressing and um, yeah it's like sometimes uh, you can't have one without the other, I think. So just finally, as frustrating as it has been for you today, is it lesson learned? I think so. I think right now is probably not the time to go over the game. I think that um, it's one of them where you just want to put it to the back of your mind for a bit. We need to, to have a look back at it throughout the week and just see where we did go wrong. Um, but we just got, I suppose, we just got to say sorry really to the fans because even though we gave everything out there. Um, we didn't really put on the performance that was worthy of the shirt, I think. Um, letting six goals in, especially to a rival, I think that as a team, we just um, we wanted to do better than that. Appreciate you coming up on your honesty too. Thank you. The start for Manchester United, it went to set the tone for the rest of the game as well overall. How did it feel? Yeah, it was great. Um, I think we always knew it was going to be a tough game. Um, the way they play is a lot different to, to other teams by going man-to-man. Um, I think we exploited that today. More goals in the first half than Manchester United have scored here all season. Where yeah. did they come from? Um, I think it was just, just from great pressing from the front. Um, I think we've most is it two or three we've we've won high up. Uh, we've gone that counter attack and just doing what we've been doing in training all week, um, playing the first pass forward and thankfully went back of the net. Scott McTominay has gone into Premier League history today. No yeah. player in all the years of the Premier League has scored two goals in the first three minutes. Yeah. How good was he today? Yeah, brilliant. Um, Scott gives it all every game. I think today he was, he was always going to I mean, it suited him very well. Um, I think that any pass that went forward he just ran on to. Um, as you see, he can, he can run all game. Um, I think I'm obviously delighted for him. I think he'd be a bit gutted that he didn't get his hat-trick in the end. I think he tried to take it off Bruno, but uh, in that situation, you've got to be professional. And the, the penalty taker is him. So. And as far as yourself is concerned, back in the start of line, your first goal in the Premier League, I think, for 33 matches. Mm. How was it for you? Yeah, delighted. Um, as I said, I'm working hard in training, just, just doing what I can each week to help the team. Um, as I say, it's, it's great to play today. It was, it was unbelievable for me. I've been, I've been ready for... For, for a long time now and just as soon as the gaffer calls on me I'll be ready and just finally talking of the gaffer his two year anniversary yesterday in that two years at the wheel as they say only Manchester City and Liverpool have picked up more points which yeah. is incredible you're third in the table now you've got the League Cup court final yeah. to come this week what is the feeling like what are you thinking yeah I think for us it's just taking game by game um, I think that's taken us to third in the, in the Prem now but it's uh, obviously are you thinking more than that no, we're just we're just taking game by game, really. Um, as I said, you've got Carabao Cup on Wednesday. Um, we're, doing, we're doing well at the league at the minute, but we can't get carried away. And I think that's what the manager says. We've just got to think about game by game. We've got a, a massive game on Wednesday now, which is what we're concentrating on. Good man. Well done today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Daniel. Two very impressive young men. From mm. him, I put that interviewer straight immediately. 33 appearances, five minutes here, seven minutes there. Oh, yeah, he's played Ten a lot of sub. There. He's had a lot I mean, of sub games. That's where stats can be mm. deceptive, isn't it? Yes, yeah, can be. As for Bamford, I thought absolutely terrific. Yes. Terrific yes. in what he had to say. Yeah, he was very well spoken. I mean, he, he knows the importance of the game, obviously. He knows how disappointed Leeds United fans are going to be, obviously. He was quick to point that out, that uh, they themselves were distraught at the manner in which they've been beaten. It was interesting, I thought, when he was asked, will that give you... Will you pause for thought, do you think, in the way you go about playing? And he never said yes, it should. I think he knows that when they play next, it's going to be exactly the same that Marcello Bielsa is going to ask them to do. I don't see him changing, Richard. Don't see him changing. No. Well, then ultimately, they may have a problem. They may. We shall see. Um, we knew from the first minute they were going to be at it, so we just had to, I mean, run harder. Um, and today, yeah, I thought we did that. Um, you've seen the goals we scored, went up, went up quite early, went 3-0, just for half-time and that's when we had to just keep on it. Um, we couldn't lose our heads at any points, they obviously scored that goal before half-time, gave them a little lift and we just had to come out second half and just, just keep doing what we did first half. 
we all know that we've been going behind in games, particularly away from yeah. home. But to be two up after three minutes makes a lovely change, doesn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. It's always nice to score first goal, but you know, from then on, we just got to keep doing what we've done in training all week. We just got the first, we've got to go on and score the next, which we did. Um, I think we got obviously that comfortable lead at half time, which obviously going they, as, as we conceded half time, but we still had that comfortable lead. So. As I said, second half, we're just about doing exactly the same. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough game, and, and we did very well today. Did you have a, a specific role today, particularly against the lead side, who obviously commit loads of players forward and yeah. counter-attacks will be important in a game like this? Yeah, I think we all knew that it was going to be 1v1s all over the pitch. Um, so um, it was just about winning them, um, and I think we definitely did that today. I mean, you've ever faced a team who, who, who just don't change the way? Even at 4 0, they've played exactly the same way. 6 1, they play exactly the same way. Um, I don't think there's, there's, there's many teams like it, but um, I think it's great, great for them to the spirit to, to try and get back. But I think we, we were just the, the better team today. So much attacking power in this Manchester United side. Look at the look at the bench as well. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's quite something. The competition for places is immense, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's always going to be it's always going to be here, and I think that's great for all of us. Um, I, I don't think any of us want to be in the team thinking, oh, we're going to play week in week out. We want to, do you know what I mean? For play play that competition, um, and I think it's good that we can all play each position as well. Obviously, it was a team performance, but maybe a word on Scott. Obviously, got a couple of games, and it was just yeah. driving through the midfield for 90 minutes. Yeah, I think it was beautiful for Scott. I think. As, as the man to man, I think any bounce pass going from the striker to him, he was always going to be through. Um, obviously, he got that two goals today. Um, I think he probably wanted to take the pen, but you know what I mean, in them situations, you've got to be professional, and the, the penalty taker is Bruno. So, yeah. And you hitting the net at the Stretford end, it's a shame that there's nobody in the Stretford end in a night like this, isn't it? But... Yeah, it's always nice going that end. There's, there's, there's obviously, there's no cheer, but I know they're, they're, not, they're cheering back on. And third, well, I know it's still early days, but you're in the top three. I mean, keep winning, then. Things can happen, can't they? Yeah, obviously it's great. Um, we can't get carried away. There's, there's so many games before the, the new year. Um, we've just got we've got to keep fighting. Um, think about every game. We've obviously got the Carabao Cup on, on Wednesday now, so um, it's, it's straight to that one and think about them. Well done today. Thanks, Thanks very, very much. much. Thank you. Brilliant game to watch. How was it from your angle? That must go down in history as one of the most entertaining and enjoyable uh, wins over Leeds United. I've, I've got to say that it's such a pity that not, our fans are not here to spur the boys on, help them even more, because you know the effort they put in today, the boys, the, the, all the running they've had to do, uh, all the closing down, all the check-in movement to get away from their markers. With our fans, that it would have been even easier for them. And how nice for you not to think oh, we need to make a comeback. You're at two up after three minutes, yeah. I suppose. To ah, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant start. Great two goals by Scott and some. The, the, the way we approach the game, of course, the, the, we've shown them videos, analysed, and you know they're wide-eyed, the boys, when they see the clips we show them and the spaces that can appear or not appear if you don't do the work. And uh, they did the work spot on. I mean, you mentioned Scott there, obviously a team performance, but a word about his performance, not just the goals, but driving on from, oh, well, 90 minutes from through the midfield. Yeah, it's uh, he's one of those uh, boys, that it, well, both him and Fred, they, they never stop. They run, they run, they run. We know that it, it was going to be a game for uh, fitness and physicality and uh, excellent performances. How is he? Did he take a little knock? I'm not sure. It, will, uh, it looked like a groin issue, so... Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Uh, but at 4-1, and indeed 6-1, they did. They, they played stop. the same way. Yeah, they don't stop. 4-0 <laughs> up, 4-0 down, doesn't matter. 6-1, it doesn't matter. They make you run until the end and fight until the end. You have to concentrate. They create chances. It could have been 12-4 easily. Could have, we could have doubled and they could have doubled their goals. And that just says everything about the attitude these two teams have for football. And it should be this way. And... Those goals might be important as well. I mean, that took, take, took us above Everton, for instance, in, on, on goal difference. Goals might turn out to be important. So, sometimes they have shown and proven, unfortunately, <laughs> to, to be uh, very important goals. So uh, uh, when you add up in the end, it's always the, it's all. You never give a goal away, or you never stop uh, trying for another one. So let's see uh, at the end. But um, we're improving, getting better, getting fitter and stronger. That's and uh, some details we need to improve on. But we'll we'll, we'll get there. Six wins from seven in the form going into this mad busy. Yeah, spell. We, are, we are getting fit. We are. We have a big squad, strong squad. We have. Uh, we knew that we had to catch up a little bit and. 
Uh, but now we are capable of matching leads uh, in a game like this. Great stuff today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Dig the good stats out today because there's a few people throwing stats around to thought, look, I've got to take it back here. So first and foremost, we're going to go through a list of famed managers that have been beaten by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, across multiple competitions and so forth. Bielsa joins Mourinho, Guardiola, Tuchel, Ancelotti, Hassan Utl, Nagelsmann, Santo and Pochettino. That is one hell of a list. But in terms of the game today, six goals scored by Manchester United. Since Alex Ferguson left the club, United have scored five goals on three occasions, all have come under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And it's the first time the United have scored six or more goals since that 8-2 win over Arsenal in August 2011. On top of that, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well, 14 shots on target today, which was the most since Ferguson. Again, lots of great records here, lots of top managers. But let's move on to the players. I think there's a few players that I want to pick out, two mainly. Bruno Fernandes first up, we thought had a really good game. The key thing at the start of the game that we were speaking about was that pivot point on defence defensive midfield on the counter-attack, Bruno to receive it quickly and play it off, and he did that superbly well today, of course, bypassing Phillips in defensive midfield for one of the Manchester United goals today. But on top of that, of course, the thing that we always expect with Bruno Fernandes is he works exceptionally hard, recovers the ball over and over again. One of the best for Manchester United, I think Fred was the only player that recovered the ball more than Bruno Fernandes. He isn't just playing with the ball at his feet, he isn't just creating for teammates, he is winning it back as well. Of course, five shots, three chances created, tackles, two goals and an assist. In terms of his goal scoring record and assisting record since joining Manchester United, it's absolutely sensational. Only Salah's scored more goals in the Premier League since Bruno joined and no players rushed for more assists. On top of that, if we're just taking midfielders into consideration, no midfielder scored more non-penalty goals than Bruno Fernandes. That myth about him just scoring penalties, we've just destroyed that right there. But let's move on to my man of the match. It's got to be Scott McTominay's performance from defensive midfield was fantastic. A classic box-to-box -box display I don't want to go around Des, uh, Wes, do you remember play, you know, any players that have played, uh, be, sorry, Dennis, should I say, um, players that have had better box-to-box -box midfield performances at Manchester United, maybe since Roy Keane, but we'll take a look at his statistics, they're absolutely fantastic, 90% of his passes completed in the final third, I think the first thing that I saw Scott and I thought today could be his day where he really shines, the first time he received the ball, he was under pressure, I think two Leeds players came towards him, dropped a little bit of shoulder and then played forward. And that kind of started it. And he was fantastic at understanding that, look, Leeds is two number eights or two three eights are going to be behind him and Fred. If he can make that movement into the final third, he'll get chances. Became the first Premier League player ever to score two goals in the opening three games uh, three minutes of games in the Premier League. You know, taking a look at the rest of his stats, it was box to box. You're talking chances created, the goals, the assist as well to Dan James was sensational. Lovely little move again. Great forward pass. Scott was brilliant. 10 out of 10 display from me. But anyway, there are my thoughts there. The stats for today. Over to you, Sam and Wes in the Warwick.